guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be working in a motor that came in a box. Yes, the motor came in a box, all rusty, like literally, it looked like it came from the bottom of the ocean. I'm being a sidu, hmm, maybe, who knows. This is what we got, basically a rusty PTO cover. It does not, it doesn't look any better on the other side. This is the water pump, at least it turns, but as you can see, it's really rusty. Got this, guys. This is what I got. This is stock. We gotta take this apart and see what we got in there. The squatters, forget about it. I mean, this is completely rusty. They're shut closed. I mean, I'm not using this. For the ARP studs, I checked them all and there was one nut that is bad. Put a top on the on the stock, fix the stock. You got a brand new nut for him. Not using this. This is the piece that goes right here and it's completely rusty. Cam gear, haha. <laughs> Seen better days. This guy too. Got the sensors. Rockers, look at this. It's missing the wheel and they're all sh stuck together. And can't use this. This is this is done. See what I mean? It won't even turn. So this is garbage. The head has retainers, stock springs, but the stock springs are rusty. They're pitted, they're rusty, not gonna use this. The valves, the head supposedly was done. It looked like it was done, you know? It looked like it was uh, sandblasted, done in a machine shop somewhere. They use a stock valves. They are clean, but you can tell that they are pitted. We'll get to this later. We'll get to the part of the budget. Oil cooler, this is an open loop motor. It looks like he's seen better days. I can see corrosion in there. He doesn't want to deal with that. He wants to keep that. The pistons are gone because this motor originally had water, it locked up. He took it apart. Apparently the block and the pistons were no good. So he only brought me the stuff that was good. If we look at these factory rods, they're completely rusty. And if we look at this, this is completely pitted. I am not using none of this. The cam has an aftermarket cam. It's rusty, it's pitted. Can you polish this? Probably. Do I want to polish it? No. So what we're doing is I'm just giving him another cam. That's just the way it is. I am not putting this cam in. There's no way. The crank and the counter balancer look like this. I had to put it on, I bought a chemical to get rid of rust. Five gallon jug, put it in there, got rid of all the rust. It works amazing. And then I got the crank to the machine shop. They polish it and it's ready to go. Did the same thing with this, got it polished, ready to go. These two are ready. Now, these are the pistons that I provide to him. Really nice use pistons with the rod already. So we're using this. What we're doing today is we're gonna clean everything really good and we're gonna start to put this together. I had to take this PTO cover completely apart. Gotta take the oil pump completely apart, see what we got. Have to replace these bolts. <sighs> So the story on this is he bought a 260 2012 zooped up doing 80 somehow he the motor was locked and he got screwed according to him according to him he basically got screwed in the deal took the motor out took it apart brought me all these parts he is in a budget he doesn't want to spend money i looked at the parts we agree on a price a cheap price this is where I'm going. This is why I'm making this video. Now that one screw is me, because there's so many parts wrong with this that I will not, I'm not going to put back into this motor because at the end of the day, I make, yes, I'm building an engine and this engine is gonna represent me. And yes, any other person would probably say, well, 
this is what he paid for, this is what he's getting. I don't want to do that. And since I have a lot of parts, I can sacrifice and I can give him the parts and not add it to the bill because I did agree to a price. And to a certain extent, I, I can deal with that, it's fine. So what we're gonna do is take everything apart, replace the parts that I'm not charging him because, because at the end of the day, it's me building the engine and I wanna feel good about it. And there's this thing called karma. Hmm. Don't wanna mess with karma. So here we go. Let's go through this whole thing, clean it up, and let's put this motor together. Now, as far as the block, I supply the block. We already honed it. He's sticking with stack compression, so I had to get a good block. And that is hard to get. Got him a, a good block. We're gonna clean it and go from there. And as far as the supercharger goes, I think this baby has seen better days. It's a big supercharger. I don't know what it is. If it's a 135 or 142. It's a gold wheel, so this is an old ET wheel. And then, of course, the back is all rusty. The gear's rusty, and it sounds. That bearing, <laughs> the bearings are no good. I'm curious to see what he's gonna do about this. If it was me, I would rebuild the whole charger so whoever gets this jet ski has a good jet ski. <laughs> All I know is that at least the motor, I'm gonna do it like I do every motor. There's not gonna be any shortcuts. I don't know. I don't know what to say. We'll see what happens. All right, as far as oil pump goes, look at this. This is completely, there's just debris in there. This is all rusty. Got to clean this, have to clean it. This is getting cleaned. And then we go on the PTO cover, took everything out. As you can see, this is the bottom. Look at this. You can't, you can't put this together like this. Look at this one. All of the stuff, it's just gonna be around your motor when you put your motor together. Gotta take everything apart, go through it, put the squirrel off, make sure that it's good. And then this guy here, there's a little spring in there and there's a little ball in here. Got to make sure that this is good. If it's clogged, you've got to replace it. Going through all this, cleaning everything right, putting it back together, and we start assembling. All right, guys, so you know that I like to teach you guys something in every video. There's only one reason why I'm doing this video, because, you know, building a motor to me, I mean, it's kind of funny that the motor is all messed up and I got it in a box, but to me it's a boring video, but I do want to teach you one thing, and that's the only thing why I'm doing this video, and it's this, this supercharger squatter thing. A lot of people messed up with this because especially a PTO like this and a motor that's been around my shop, this thing moves, it's really easy. Like you see how I can move it with my finger? So if you lay, if it falls or whatever, you always, always want to check this. And it's very easy. I already put everything back. Everything is nice and clean, lubricated. I'm gonna teach you how to do this, how this quarter should be. This customer painted a supercharger, and of course he painted right here where it's it slides into the PTO cover. The tolerance there is very, very small, and if you put paint, ha, you're gonna have a problem. So of course I had to scrape all the paint off. To do this test is I took the oil rings off. See the two oil rings that go here, they seal so the oil doesn't come out. So now it's a lot easier to put the supercharger in the hole so you don't have to fight it. All right, so we take this, we put this guy in here, just like it's supposed to go. You see how easy it goes in? Just right there. It doesn't matter where it is because all you're looking for is the center and voila. What did I tell you guys? You see, this is why it's important. And this is what I, I wanted to show you guys. That's not in the center. It's completely to the side. You see what I mean? So this supercharger would not be getting the oil that it needs to lubricate itself. This would have been a disaster. And it's very easy to work with. All you need is a pair of pliers and you just you just bend it a little bit. Bend it a little bit this way. There you go, now we're there. Bend it a little bit up. Whatever you gotta do, you know, you just 
you just find now basically now it's right in the center if you look at it right in the center i leave a little space because i seen other people that put it right in there what happens is if it rubs it will close it's a tiny 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 little hole and if it rubs it will kind of the metal will go inside the little hole and it actually closes the little pin hole that is there you don't want to do that so don't be greedy you can have maybe you know the half a millimeter or whatever you know away from the charger as long as you are pointing right inside that's good in my book so this is ready to go now we're ready to install this i hope this will help you for your next bill got this guys from you know my inventory these are used but man they look a lot better than those so that's what we're using put the cattle springs and retainers on the head brand new springs and retainers then we come over here and look at this guys i cannot make this up someone put car seals on the springs and two are factory now you take the factory ones out and it's fine you know this is a factory one this is a factory one now this car ones I can even I can even take this out. I mean look at this. Ugh. You know what that does? When it's like that, it will crack the spring. So if you don't have the right seal, I can even put them back in. It's gonna crack your spring and that that is going to give you more issues down the line don't save a couple of bucks go to the dealer get oem parts don't get stuff like this because it doesn't work all right we got the head on pretty much everything is closed on the bottom putting the studs gotta torque the studs um i do put you know this is something i always want to say to you guys um i put a little bit of the arp fastener loop on the actual washer so i put some on the bottom of the washer some on the top of the washer and of course some on the actual stud i mean i'm sure most of you know that for that one guy hmm now you know let's torque that let's continue got a brand new timing chain let's keep going all right guys here we go with another issue when you think you know everything and for all means you know you guys know that i i admit when i don't know nothing and this one got me this motor the customer wanted any budget i've been fighting with him now nah, don't reuse parts that are not supposed to be reused so i kind of convinced him a little bit giving you know parts a cost just so i know that i'm building something good this head this head was done machine shop fresh off the machine shop done i was i wasn't supposed to touch his head don't wash it don't do nothing to it well he looked like it was sandblasted got the whole motor already on timing everything went to put on my rockers the rockers that i got him because those rockers are no good when i went to put on the bolts well the bolts just kind of they were a little crunchy and i go ha huh, little crunchy they went all the way down but a little crunchy you know what that means the machine shop didn't really wash this head they probably blow it off and that's it i ain't no expert but i think there's not supposed to be any sand in those holes especially that those holes lubricate the rockers well we got to do things the right way i guess from now on i don't trust well i don't trust anybody but when the customer says you know this is fresh as a machine so you don't have to do anything <laughs> anyways now gotta take off the head take it off timing take you know everything is torque and everything take it off wash it and then put it back on when you think you know everything you don't know nothing unbelievable well let's get to work all right so this confirmed what i was saying about the sandblasting i took the head off and if you guys look right there i don't know if you can see it on the camera that is sand and that right there right there is three grains of sand 
I don't know if you can see. You can see it a lot here and right there. And if we wipe it off, see it's right there on my finger. Well, like I say, when you think you know everything, you don't know nothing. So let's go ahead and clean this head really good. I'm gonna take off the sensor, just, you know, I don't get nothing in the sensor. Clean it up the right way, and then we can put everything back on. <sighs> All right, guys, so this is something so you guys learn. I've been washing, I've washed this head like five times and sand still comes out. So what I did was I took off this plug right here. This is where the oil is. You know, the, the, you can check oil pressure on your ski by just taking this plug out and you can put whatever gauge you have and you can see manual oil pressure. But if we go like this, look at that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that is sand right there sand so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the head to my machine shop they're gonna put it on the oven they have like big washing machine that has boiling water let them take all the spins and retainers off everything i already took this guy off basically wash the whole thing that is going to give me more guarantee for me when i put this motor together that is not going to blow up see what happened four to six days later all right guys so we got the head back from the machine shop they said they had to put it in the machine like three times because they want to be 100 percent sure that this there's no sand in it they also went through all the threads make sure that there's nothing in the threads when i took it back i washed it put soap in it went through the threads myself with the bolts that are supposed to go there blew on it nothing came out feeling pretty confident that this is pretty much clean. Now, to begin with, this is not a very good head. As you can see right here, the scoring where the cam goes through. That's okay. It's, you know, see those got so much oil pressure, a little score in there, it's okay. There's a reason why Rotax doesn't put a bearing there, which that tells you it's okay to have a little scoring. You're not gonna lose much. I mean, the, 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 like I said, these things are cold. They're, like 100 psi of oil pressure pretty much confident right now that this is gonna work clean everything up blew everything out we are ready to install it back in the motor let's see what happens all right all right we got the head what do you think huh. like it see it looks good He says it's fine. Yeah, I think it looks good. It's fine. All right, let's put it in. It ain't my fault. It's gonna be his, this guy's fault. All right, let's put the studs on. Anything happens to this, it's this guy's fault. Here are the studs. Where's the... You, you, you have uh, what, the gun? Uh, I don't know, I don't know what the gun, oh. Got the gun. So you don't want it, you know, to put too much pressure, but you want to be, make sure that it's all the way in the bottom. Where's the torque? You, you got the torque? Or the Got it. He's gonna torque it, so we'll see. I'm gonna mm -hmm. set it at 30. See what happens. 30. Just to make sure that everything is good. 
All right, now we go to 60 pounds. I like to do it that it won't, I don't come back. You see how I just keep going? Me, just me. Recheck twice. Just make sure that okay, the torque is there. Okay, and now it's 90 pounds. Now, since this guy is talking all that, then he's gonna do the 90 pounds. What, you want me to do the 90 pounds? You Fine. do the 90 pounds. Go away. Come on, yeah. go. Don't be doing the 90 pounds. Now, of course, we recheck it again. Just make sure that everything is there. All right, and just like that, your head is stored. Now, don't forget, let's put this back to zero. Nice, always wanna put it back all the way down to zero. Don't forget about these two little guys, E8s that go all the way in the front of the head. I seen a lot of motors without this, but hey, if the factory put it there, there's a reason. Put them in there. I like to put a little bit of blue lock Loctite on them. We go from there. All right, just like that, we got the head on. Now what we're gonna do is put the cam in, put it on timing, and we go from there. We're gonna use some BP engine lube. Lube it up, baby. I like to do the head. I kind of put it with my finger and just go up into the little oil, the bolts from the rockers, a little hole. That's how they get lubricated. So I like to put some in there. Now another tip is, you know, this head been washed so many times. I like to put a little bit of oil on top of the valve seats. Just my thing, you know. You don't want it. I don't think it being dry like that is good. All right, we got that. Now we're gonna put it on the cam. Lock the cam. We put the locking little locking piece that goes on the back of the cam. A little uh, VP lube in there. And now we are ready for the cam gear. All right, to put the cam gear in, it's very easy when the PTO cover is not here. All you do, it's without the sensor and none of the stuff, you grab your timing chain, come in here, and then you just put it on the back. You lay it on top of the cam, and you get this guy, kind of how it goes. It goes about right there, you see the two little lines? Now another tip is, if these two little lines, sometimes they come black, sometimes they don't. So what I do is I use um, just a black marker, and I just barely, because they do stick out, so it's very easy to do it with a black marker, which I did on this one. So we put it in here. We grab, grab the chain, put it in here, and then we just put the chain on, just like that, almost there. And then what you can do, since we don't have anything, you pull in here. See, it's one tooth off. So now what we do, we just go like this. Now we check it again. We push on this and it's right in the money. That is perfect, that's what you wanna see. This one a little, barely you can see, if you look at your motor level like that, you wanna see barely this one top of the, in top of the head, and this one up a little bit. That is factory um, timing. So, we know we're in factory timing, now we put the bolts, we put the Loctite, we put the bolts, and we don't tighten them. Put it all the way so you can still move the cam gear back and forth, but they're there. And we put that timing, 
tensioner in and lock it into place and then we can tighten the bolts. That's how you do it. All right, we got the timing in, we got everything in. Come on. Put in the rockers. And you, my friend, are gonna put in the bolts. Go. Doing the wrong way. Using like this. Come on now. For today. I know the peanut gallery here. Alright, there you go. Alright, now it's your turn. Alright, let me see how you can do it. Alright, let me show this guy how it's done. Ah, see? Now ah, you're having trouble, huh? Ah, there you go, see? It's not just me. Huh? Ah. Yeah? Well, it looks like he got this. When I do it, you know, just, just so you go fast. I mean, I use this. It's not, you know, you're not going to torque it with this. And that's pretty good. Now we're going to do 14 foot pounds of torque on a 90 degree. Then again, we check it again, make sure that we have the torque right. I'm drinking my coffee. Even though it's like three o'clock in the now let me go find the other guy so he can do the 90 degrees so he can show you guys how it's done. All right, when it comes down to the 90 degree, you want to use something that you're comfortable. This is nice and big. You don't want to use a tiny one, and then it's really hard to get the 90, and then you mess it up. Let's go on this side. Can I go on this side? So the easiest way Go all the way over here. Make sure that you're right there. Oops. Nice and straight. And there's your name. Repeat the process. And there you have it. There's your name. Now let me go back to the other side and bring my phone. All right, so what we got left now is just this little guy here. I put a little bit of BP lube on it. Put it in here. And now it's gonna be this guy's little sparkle of sleeves. And the valve cover. And boom, we're done. Now, obviously, since the motor came in the box, there's no gasket for this. I gotta go find a gasket. What can we do? All right, as far as this gasket go, I what I got is just old and stiff, so got him a new one, nice and soft. So this gas is very important, it's nice and soft. And let's put it in, see what we got. Make sure you check your gasket all the way around so you don't have any issues later. Now remember, these bolts that hold the valve cover, 
everybody, almost everybody over tightens them. And what happens is when you over, over tighten them, they will strip. They have a stop right here and they only go so far. If you keep putting pressure on it, you're just messing up the thread. Put it by hand first, couple of turns, and then I don't recommend you guys using one of these unless you're very comfortable with it. I'm very comfortable with this guy. I know how far to take it. Obviously, it's it got more power, but just enough. Shake and that's it. Now it's time to put on the PTO cover. And we're almost done with this baby. Oh, right, and just like that, the engine is done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And tell all your friends about Kala's performance and Kala's world. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Fearless. the channel he go with another episode no I'm gonna I'm gonna go okay got it all right here we go and pair it Bluetooth ready pair hmm oh boy the issue with this is he brought me all this stuff he got me to agree on a price we agree on a price very cheap price because I feel bad for him he bought the jet ski. Let's go back. And there's a plane going by. According to him, he got screwed. Hmm. I wonder who got screwed there. <laughs> oh, this GoPro issues. There you go. You know, I like to teach you guys something in all my videos. And there's only one reason why I'm doing this video, because I always forget about this one thing. You know, say me, I forgot what I was talking about. I'm, I'm, this is so funny. I'm so concentrated on what, wanna, what I wanna say, that I go black. Huh. What, the, what, what? What's going on here? All right, let's start all over again. It's really hard, you know. It, I don't have a production, you know, whole team behind me. It's just me and the camera. And I know what I want to say. And sometimes it just there, there's just so much going on in this head that I just completely, completely go blank. And it just happened. All right, let's start all over again.